In this video, we will discuss some common misconceptions when defining concrete T and L beams in the SAFE program. To access the T and L beam definition, we'll go to Define, Section Properties, Frame Sections. We'll click on Add New Property, and you'll see the options become available. Concrete T, Concrete L, and there are some other ones available, as you can see. Here you can see the frame section property data. You have the ability to update property names, specify materials, as well as update the shape on the fly. So a common question I get is that what should the flange thickness be defined as? Should I include the slab thickness in the flange thickness value? So here you can see the total depth and width can be defined. But when it comes down to flange thickness, if the shape type is T-beam or L-beam, and the beam is located in the model using a top insertion point such that the flange of the beam and the slab overlap, the flange of the beam will be ignored so that this material is not counted twice. So in this case, we have a flange thickness of eight inches. As you can see from this point down to here, I can make updates to the flange thickness. And as you can see, it will update automatically. So only the rectangular portion of the beam extending below the slab will be used in the analysis property calculation of the beam. Uh, one additional note to remember, for analysis purposes, specifying a rectangular beam connected to the slab with a top insertion point results in an accurate modeling of T and L beam behavior and is typically preferred to using T beam and L beam shapes where the material must be discarded. You can set up property modifiers as well, updating the cross-sectional area, shear area in both directions, as well as moment of inertia about both axes, two and three. Lastly, if we take a look at the design property data, there are three options available to the user here. Updating the rebar material for longitudinal bars as well as confinement bars. This is a common misconception as well when talking about the design property dimension data. What do these actual three options mean? So if you're selecting the first option, flange dimensions from analysis property data, the depth is specified from the top of the slab, typically the elevation of the model datum or the bottom of the slab if the beam is inverted. You can also select auto if the flange width is to be determined by the program based on the design code and slab depth. And lastly, if you select user to specify the flange width or slab depth manually. 